Hi and welcome to how to use CAD. For today's tutorial we're going to take a look at a side return rear extension project to a flat in Islington, London. It was a lovely flat and in a great location so take a look at how much space and value we added to make this project a, a real winner in terms of modern design plus adding value in the process. Location, location, location. That's what they say when it comes to um, making money on uh, London property. If it's not in the right location, you may be wasting your time. Now, this particular property, um, this is the existing layout. It's a ground floor flat and it's effectively uh, it's one that's been extended already. So this was the entrance hall, common parts, upstairs up to the upper floor and then this was the entrance to the flats here so um, as you can see this is generally the lounge got a bedroom there window to the garden uh, you got a bathroom tucked in between so nothing special about that down the corridor you got an extra loo you got a little uh, uh, stairs going down into a, a substandard basement meaning it's not tall enough to make habitable but uh, with a bit of digging it's always possible but again that's a, that's a different project for a different day so if we come in here this was effectively the kitchen all down one side uh, dining area and uh, this had been extended uh, into uh, the family living room so uh, it was actually uh, quite decent but uh, again all pretty boring yeah all pretty boring there was parts of the kitchen had been brought in here uh, so they had dining they had a bit of kitchen here but they had more kitchen in here so it wasn't wasn't coherent it wasn't and nothing was joined up it didn't, didn't really work so our brief was to see if we can extend and uh, this is what we looked at doing so again uh, we kept the existing layout there was no changes to this area at all uh, and this time we're showing the actual layout as in the, what the rooms are for so bedroom bedroom again and what we did then was we turned this area into another bedroom uh, so we carried on down the corridor and um, here we, as you can see then we've got a kitchen uh, we got a huge island in the middle, nice roof lantern, and a bit of a couch here and a family area. So again, you got more kitchen here. So you've got to remember, it, the kitchen uh, needs to be big enough to support the dwelling. So if it's a five-bedroom house, you need a substantial uh, kitchen. But on a two-bedroom house or a three-bedroom house, it can be somewhat less. And of course, uh, here again with the combination of this run here which is what have we got we got a three meter run here similar there six meters then you've got the island again so that's that's a substantial kitchen if you needed a bit more uh, you've always got the option to extend here or put a bit more on that side but I, I don't think that was necessary so what we've done here now instead of breaking out the uh, the bay which would have been expensive because there's another bay above it. Um, we would have had structural implications there, costly bits. We decided to keep this as a well. And so now what happens is we've got a window for the shower room. We've got a lovely bay window on this bedroom. Um, and of course we've got French doors into the light well. So garden light well, perfect. Uh, and then, uh, this was the existing area, so we pushed out, what was it, another three meters and again added four meters of uh, bifold, uh, normally the floor to ceiling, anthracite grey. If you want to make it look like crittle then we uh, put a few lines in the doors, but uh, again decent patio on the back, about four to five meters is always good, larger and What's also important is you keep the patio the same level as the floor within, if possible. 
and if the budget can spring it, don't have a threshold, just have the recess or the groove in the floor so that when the doors are open, it's just one continuous flow. If you want to add icing on the cake, uh, use something uh, material for the floor. Use something that you can carry the same material out. So uh, there's loads of uh, tiles and different types of materials you can now get. Uh, that limestone, for example, limestone tiles, limestone floors, and carry on out. And, uh, and, and that always looks fantastic. Um, so if you come, if you look at it from here, say you're standing here and you take the view, look at it. You're looking at, let's see, from, you're looking from this point uh, onto the patio here. You're looking at 12 to 13 meters uh, view of furnished uh, accommodation. And that, that's a beautiful look. And of course the width is substantial. So now given that it's Islington, um, if you add on, uh, uh, what, do we do? what do we say here, 6, 18, you add on 30 square meters of, uh, uh, of living space to a property in Islington, you are adding a substantial value that I can, that I can reassure you. So um, way more than what the bill costs is. Now this was previously when the, in this building was extended with this extension, it was done very simple with block, a few doors and uh, a flat roof. So all we did was strip it all out, take out the flat roof and um, redone completely all the way around. So, but because it's building block and render, it's not that expensive, meaning it's not as expensive as you would normally uh, have for bricks and uh, fancy, fancy looking tiles or any, any kind of, you know, uh, well, any, any kind of brickwork is more expensive, but uh, what I'm really saying is block work is the cheapest way you can build. And that's two layers of block with insulation inside. Now, because these walls were already in uh, here, uh, uh, foundations only start here. So you'd be excavating this element all the way around. You would also need party wall agreements with the house next door, uh, both sides. And you would need permission from the freeholder, whoever owns the, uh, the freehold for the property. Bear in mind it's flats. Uh, so the leaseholders within your property will sign a party wall agreement as will the freeholder. You would also need freeholders permission or effectively a license to extend the flat. So it's always important. Uh, the first thing you do here if you're thinking about a project like this is start with uh, the freeholder and see if he's going to charge you an arm and a leg for the license. Um, and bargain like crazy. If they say 10,000 then offer him you know 50 pounds. So that's how it works, bargain like nuts, because there is no such thing as a fixed price, just bargain. Uh, that's, that's all I can say to you. Uh, okay, so you've got a fair idea. Now, like I say, bill costs on something like this might be about, let's say, 120k, 120,000 to uh, strip this out and rebuild. But I would say, given the location, you're adding the best part of 200,000. So. There's a lovely £80,000 profit, instant added value, uh, more over and above the cost of the, the build. If you happen to have, if you happen to be in the trade and can get stuff cheaper or, you know, more than capable of digging out your own foundations, then he'll even make a lot more money. So, yeah, a great location, um, great extension project, all kept very simple, but fantastic living space afterwards. And as you can see, two fantastic bedrooms here, a little bit smaller, but this bedroom's got lots of quirks because we kept um, the bay. And in doing so, uh, we uh, cut down on costly structural costs. Okay, um, that's, that's about it for this one. So hopefully you've enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, you've got a bit more information on property development and you'll be able to use all your CAD tools to make money through fantastic drawings and creating excellent living space. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next video.